three and seven. Hokies are ready, and we are ready in Blacksburg for some Sunday afternoon basketball. In the air, and Gardner-Webb starts out with possession. Both these teams are coming off games in which they struggled offensively. Gardner-Webb losing, like you mentioned, to Kennesaw, only scoring 61. The Hokies only scoring 63 against Chattanooga on Wednesday. Here's Cornwall up top, three on the way. And it's missed by Jamison. Tyrese Radford claps it in for a defensive rebound. Jamison's their leading scorer. You'll see him drive it more than shoot the three. He can make the wide open three, but he's much more dangerous driving to the basket. There's Wobisa Beatty to Nolly. Nothing but net from the red shirt freshman. Well, Anders Nolly really undoubtedly the best player on this Virginia Tech team so far to start the season. A couple of big performances for the Hokies in Big moments against Clemson and Michigan State. Yeah, Landers Nolly, really a talented guy. One of the one of those great freshmen in the ACC. We'll talk about that later in the broadcast. Perez in and out from three, and the Hokies get the ball back. Perez, Jose Perez was such a good player a year ago, but Gardner Webb lost DJ Laster and David Effiani, their best two players. Perez supposed to be the leader coming back, but he has struggled from three. He's doing everything else really well, but can't get the three ball to go down. Yeah, Matt, coming into this game just 20% from beyond the arc. Preseason Big South Player of the Year. Well, B. Sabini not struggling from beyond the arc. Hokies are two of two from three land. Well, if Wabisa Beatty can shoot the three regularly for Virginia Tech, that, that, that's a game changer offensively for the Hokies. He didn't light it up offensively against Chattanooga, but he had a big three in the closing moments against Chattanooga to put the Hokies up by a comfortable margin right there at the end of the game. Turner bounces to Jamison. The Bulldogs have their first points. That's where Jamison is so good. The senior has just gotten better and better. Great motor. If he can get to that 5 to 10 foot range, he really can hurt you on that end. Yeah, the senior from East Point, Georgia, 14.6 points per game. He finds Radford. Ema Lee coming off of a 22 point performance. This is the bunny. And it's pulled down by Turner. You could see Aline just rolling with confidence over the last few games. Well, Perez continuing to struggle from three. Now missed assignment for Virginia Tech. And fortunately for the Hokies, Perez couldn't knock it down. Maybe under the basket. Nolly, another three. Bang! What a quick release. I mean, you just have to be there on the catch or he can get it off. The Hokies struggled a few nights ago against Chattanooga from three. Only six of them hit by Virginia Tech, a team that really defines a lot of their offensive identity off of the three ball. Leading the ACC at 10.8 per game, and they need to make double figures every night against really good opponents. Ludovic Defial gets his first layup. Defial's a good-looking sophomore, really skilled. He can step out and shoot the three but he's going to be a really good player for Tim Kraft and this Gardner-Webb club. DJ Horn, a guy we haven't mentioned yet for Virginia Tech. The junior for the Hokies, setting up space for Wabisa Beatty to finish at the rim. This match got the defender going in the wrong direction, stayed under control. He has great balance, which really helps him at that point guard spot. Gardner-Webb notably without one of their starting guards and Nate Johnson. Christian Turner has stepped up into that starting role for Gardner Webb. There you see the matchup beating. Usually draws the toughest assignment, and he did again against Jameson. Good job, good help by Landers Nolly, too. Yeah, Beatty really has defined himself as a pretty good defender this year. Nolly finds Radford. So they back off Radford, more of a driver. Off the back iron, pulled down by Perez. Cornwall for the triple. Yes. Yeah, you can't leave him open. He's the scoring point guard, shoots nearly 50% from three. That was a defensive assignment mistake by the Hokies. Gardner Webb pulling back within two possessions. Cornwall from Brooklyn, New York. Perez from Bronx, New York. 
Kareem Reed, who you'll see later, is from the Queens, New York. Horn for three. Too hard. Yeah, Gardner Webb and Tim Kraft really stressing New York as really a recruiting hub to bring to Boiling Springs, North Carolina. Yeah, and they've signed another young man who's from Georgia but was born in Manhattan. So they've got four of the five boroughs <laughs> taken care of. And the Boiling Springs and Manhattan are absolutely the same. <laughs> <laughs> Perez under duress sinks the three. Dolly was there. Maybe he's better with the hand in his face. He missed a couple open ones early, but made that one with Landers Nolly all over him. Good shot by Jose Perez. If he gets going again, that changes his Gardner Webb team. Who's picked the first or second in the Big South? Turnover stolen by Perez. Yeah, Gardner Webb, the reigning Big South champions, right now at three and seven. Ended the NCAA tournament last year for the first time in history at the D1 level for Gardner-Webb. They had made it at the JUCO level as well as Division II. Lost yeah. to eventual national champion Virginia. Great basketball tradition at Gardner-Webb, and Tim Kraft has done a great job. Great 20-win seasons. He's beaten five Power 5 teams. Struggles against a pretty tough schedule in the beginning of the season. Yeah, really tough schedule. Playing a lot of games away from home, and he's leading the team in so many different things, from rebounds to assists to minutes played. He just hasn't made the three ball, and he's got one already tonight. A lean out of the inbounds pass. Misses off the front rim. Rebounds pulled down by the freshman from Queens, Kareem Reed. Enters the game for the first time for Gardner Webb. Good looking Hunter, young player. Hunter Couture on the floor for Virginia Tech. We did not see him against Chattanooga. Was out with an ankle injury and just didn't want to risk it. Hornwall misses the layup. And a foul. Nice job by Eric Jamison. Well, Tim Kraft in his seventh season, really a talented coach at the mid-major ranks, made it to the NCAA tournament last year and had already coached at Gardner-Webb in the last decade as well. Yeah, he, he's got three wins over ACC opponents. They've beaten Purdue. They've beaten Nebraska. Five power, five wins since he's been there. And, of course, the big highlight, making the NCAA last year, led Virginia in the first round at halftime. And, and then, of course, Virginia got it going in the second half. I think they went on to have a pretty good tournament. Right. If, I, if my memory serves correctly. <laughs> <laughs> National champions out of the ACC. On Ojiako on the floor for the first time for Virginia Tech. All tied up, the Hokies at one point led 11 to 4. Beatty hands it off to a lead. Lost the ball, another turnover potentially loose on the floor. And a tie-up that will keep the ball with Virginia Tech. Mike Young in his first season as the head coach of Virginia Tech. And Gardner-Webb is a team that he certainly is familiar with. He played them a good amount when he was at Wofford. Yeah, only about 20 minutes apart. And uh, they weren't in the same league, but very familiar. And he and Tim Kraft cross paths quite a bit. Mike Young was really glad the other night. One thing they didn't struggle with offensively was turnovers. Only seven in the game against Chattanooga. There's Couture on a high dribble. Sinks the fadeaway. Yeah, he's a valuable guy. Started some early, coming off the bench now, but the bench only played 25 minutes against Chattanooga the other night. That's a season low. They've been getting a lot of production and minutes out of that bench. And I think that's something that Virginia Tech, the big question this year, how was their depth going to be? As Nolly goes off the glass, the foul called on Gardner-Webb. Lance Terry, the freshman. Just a little bump right there. It's out of noon in Georgia. Who's the number two guard in the state of Georgia last year? Can really shoot the basketball. And he's one, another one of those guys who should get a lot better as the season goes on, production wise. A few players from Georgia out here today, Landers Nolly being one of them. Is Another Georgia native checks in, P.J. Horn. And we'll get another look at the freshman on the floor for Virginia Tech and Jalen Cohn. Back 
to a three-point lead. Isaiah Wilkins also on the floor. Played a good amount last year of Virginia Tech's third straight trip to the NCAA tournament. Leading returning score. Here's Perez on a high drive. Terry. Perez. Good ball moving side to side. Matched up on Wilkins. Can't hit the hook shot. What will the Hokies do in transition? To Jalen Cohn. Another turnover. Here comes Lance Terry. Still loose and picked up by Isaiah Wilkins. Cohn for three. He got it. Well, a day after he turned 18 years old, drilling a three here at Castle Coliseum. A youngster who even looks young, doesn't he? <laughs> well, him and Naheem Aline both reclassified to the class of 2019 so they could play for Mike Young this year. There he finds Jenkins. Shot clock running down to five. Cornwall has to make a move. Another turnover. The Hokies get the ball back. As has bought in 100%, and that is big for the Hokies. Yeah, and it's a tough role for Wabi Sabidi to really come in and be the primary point guard for Virginia Tech. Justin Robinson graduating now with the Washington Wizards, and Beatty, to his credit, has really allowed Virginia Tech to get a couple of key wins early on this year. Here's Hunter Couture, steps into a three. Arna Webb got a piece of that. Hokies leading by six with a little over 11 minutes left to go in the first half. Under Webb coming off of one of their tougher games of the year against Kennesaw State. Isaiah Wilkins with a clean interception. Down the floor, and one. Probably the best thing Isaiah Wilkins does is score. Not just shoot, he can shoot it, but he can score. He can take contact and play through the contact. Good defense right there. He knows he's got the angle. Defense is at a disadvantage. Go ahead and take it up and play through the physicality. And completes the old-fashioned three-point play. Puts the Hokies up by nine off of the steal from Isaiah Wilkins. And the web trying to answer with Jamison, their leading scorer. Good job by Radford right there of leveling Jamison off, not let him penetrate on the drive. Now Perez thought about the three. Shot clock at seven and stolen again. Hunter Couture and the freshman finishes with a finger roll. Timeout called by Tim Kraft, and the Hokies have their 11-point lead going in. Ending up in five points for Virginia Tech, and that lead went from not too much to 11 <laughs> points in a hurry. And the first double-digit lead of the ball game for Virginia Tech. Cornwall backs it up. Was tied at 11-11. Cornwall with a shot clock running down. Virginia Tech's defense keeping Gardner-Webb honest. Has to get the shot off. Stolen away again. Here comes Couture. Finding Jalen Cohn. Too short. Jose Perez fouled at midcourt. Yeah, not a bad foul right there by Tyrese Radford because that was going to end up in a layup for Gardner Webb. Virginia Tech, we're seeing them try to push the tempo a little bit more, and that hasn't been something we've seen out of the Hokies in their previous games, but. Imagine, or for Virginia Tech, that has to be a little bit more challenging to try to find that way to happen. Well, it's got to start with defense and forcing some live ball turnovers will get you out in transition where you'll have some higher percentage looks. Cornwall, ending the offensive drought for Gardner-Webb. A little too much help right there by Naheem Aline, and he was late getting back to Cornwall for the three. Anders Nolly. Bob down to P.J. Horn. Lost the ball. Catch the ball down low. You've got to be strong with it because you're going to have a lot of people digging at you. Well, P.J. Horn, the de facto big man for Virginia Tech. He claps another rebound in there. 
Good defense on Jamison again, forcing him to take a contested shot. That's the kind of drive that he usually scores on. P.J. Horn in and out. New part of his game in his junior season. We didn't see him shoot that many threes in the first two years he was in Blacksburg, but is it a good amount now? He really stretches the defense because he's almost always going to be guarded by a bigger guy. Taking him away from the basket is a big deal for the Virginia Tech offense. Horn all steps back. Perez lets it fly. And the rebound for Horn. Good job again by Nolly of having a hand in the face of Perez. Nolly out of a double team. They book a foul on Gardner Webb. For Nolly, he was kind of fortunate that they called the foul before he pushed off. I think that's what Jose Perez was just talking about with the officials there. I swung the elbows a bit wildly. Tyrese Radford to inbound for the Hokies. Nolly on a pump fake. Misses. Turner finds Perez. Nolly's been very attentive to Perez and being there on the catch and contesting his shots. That's where Jamison is so good. Eric Jamison Jr. pulling Gardner Webb back within six. He's had a career high, 22 points, three consecutive games. Okies were up 22 to 11. Five straight points from Gardner Webb and an offensive foul on Virginia Tech. Sent us to another break. Gardner Webb pulling within two possessions here on ACC Network Extra. that it was time for a change. So that resulted in him moving halfway across the country here to Blacksburg, Virginia. And guys, when we talked to Mike Young about Tyrese Radford, you can just hear it in his voice how much he enjoys coaching a guy like Tyrese Radford. Well, thanks, Evan. Yeah, Mac and I, we were talking earlier about this, and Tyrese Radford might be the best competitor on this Virginia Tech team. He competes in every situation, rebounding, defense. There you go, right on cue. Steal for Tyrese Radford, finds Nolly. Bob down to Ojiako. All goes beyond the baseline for a Virginia Tech turnover. Yeah, he was open early on that possession. Nolly saw him a little late, tried to thread the needle, and right through John Giacomo. Ojiako is such a good-looking, you know, talent. He can really run. He can really jump. Loves to play. He's only played two years of basketball. Yeah, coming from Lagos, Nigeria. Played down in Florida in high school. But only played two years of competitive basketball. Now you find yourself playing at a D1 ACC University. Pulls down a defensive board. Christian Turner hasn't made a three for this year, but it's just so wide open. What a cut by Beatty. Now goes to the line. So Beatty to the line for two. And you can take the contact and go up through that. Really helps. And Beatty, of course, we talked about his balance and his vision earlier, but he is strong. 53% free throw shooter. Missed the first of two there. Yeah, he's got to be better. When you're the point guard, you've got to be shooting, preferably in the 80s, at least in the 70s, so you can be on the floor at the end of games. And he's such a critical guy for Virginia Tech. He needs to work on that free throw. It's the second. That's the Hokies up by seven. can Gardner Webb do here? Down by a couple of possessions. A whistle down low and now called on Virginia Tech. Yeah, trying to keep Lance Terry from cutting along the baseline. Fourth foul on Virginia Tech. That's a Turner, doesn't like to shoot a lot. It's Terry. Comes Turner with a shot clock under 10 to feel. 
got the layup to fall. I don't know how he did that. Ojiaku is up in his face. Talked earlier about how talented this youngster is. Just a sophomore. Out of Martinique. Sophomore coming in nearly averaging six points per game. Beatty on a jump stop. Kisses it off the glass. Just really good awareness of where everybody is. Fial on to Jenkins. And it's Terry. Well, Virginia Tech's defense has kept Gardner Webb to starting really the shooting effort inside of 10 seconds. Turner bounces to Lance Terry with two on the shot clock. It's the shot, but an offensive foul. Aline trying the charge for Virginia Tech. Got to give that body up. Coaches and players both appreciate that more than any other play. Get in legal guarding position, take it in the sternum. Easy call by the officials. Yeah, outside of the circle to give the ball right back to Virginia Tech. Led by as much as 11. Six turnovers now for Gardner Webb. Zaya Wilkins needs a lead. Another three on the way. Sophomore was too short. Good job by Aline of creating help and getting Wilkins a wide open look. Dickens on a drive. There's Turner. Spins it over to Jenkins. Bounces off the rim. The ball stays with Gardner Webb. Virginia Tech had two men down low but failed to get the rebound. Got a wide open look by Justin Jenkins, the senior out of the Webb School in Knoxville. Both of these teams, not many seniors represented in this game. Virginia Tech with one, and Brandon Johnson, the grad transfer from Alabama State. Jamison with a shot clock expiring. Nice to feel off the square and through the rim. Long. Nice hands. Good job the last couple times. Well, Matt Gardner Webb really has been hanging in there in this first half. Wilkins from the free throw line. Couple of baskets in the first half for Isaiah Wilkins, the sophomore. Terry for three. Who's under the basket and corralled by Ojiako. If the Hokies can turn that empty Gardner Webb possession into points. A lead for three. Off the mark from the left wing. Was backing up into that shot. Didn't quite have his feet under him that time. Turner. Inside out to Jamison. Off the mark from the baseline, but back into the hands of Gardner Webb off of the offensive rebound. Here's Terry. Hokies with three men in the paint. Struggles continue from long range. Three for 12 down for Gardner Webb. Only making a about six a game. Well, the Hokies aren't necessarily lighting it up either. They're four of 12. Aline. Well, he walked, and there is a Virginia Tech turnover. Brings us to our final media break of the first half. Hokies lead by seven, 27-20. Mike Young looking on, Virginia Tech up by seven. And by Wabisa Beattie, who starts out on the bench in the final three minutes of play in the first half. Perez with a long two. He has been off to begin the first half. Yeah, the Gardner Webb has missed some wide open looks from three and two. Jalen Cohn running the point for Virginia Tech. Here's Hunter Couture. Ali on a drive. Finds Couture. Hits the triple. Virginia Tech has now 15 points off the bench. 
to zero for Gardner Webb. Hokies enjoying their second double digit lead of the ball game. Jamison posting up on Landers Nolly. Even after the hard defense, the officials deem it was worthy of a foul. That'll send Jamison to the line. This is what Jamison does. He gets right to that spot and elevates. Well, Jamison already with five points. This is the second ACC team Gardner Webb has faced this season, and that goes along with just the story of how tough their beginning of the season has been with their schedule. Had to play North Carolina at the Dean Dome. Eric Jamison was held to nine points against the Tar Heels. At South Carolina, at Wichita State, uh, at Wofford. A, a really tough schedule to start the year for Tim Kraft. But it will pay dividends as long as they just don't lose their confidence. And, of course, right now, Jose Perez is struggling with that, especially from long range. Jalen Cohen up the floor for the Hokies. Working against the zone right now. A little 2-3 matchup. It's a screen and flicks it out to Hunter Couture. Couture to Nolly. Swings in and out. The freshman coming down with a rebound. And the and one falls for John Ogiaco. <laughs> I know you're not supposed to really like players, but I really <laughs> like him. You know, he, he's enthusiastic, a great student, just learning the game. And he elevates for the rebound and then elevates to put it back in. Got a good-looking stroke as it stepped away from the basket all that much. But you'll see when he shoots his free throw, uh, he's, he's got nice-looking form. Got the roll. But John Ogiaco elevating that lead to 12. A lot of potential there for Virginia Tech. That freshman standing at 6'10". Open feed down low. The feel, good effort by Wabisa Beatty, but all stays in the hands of Gardner Webb. Good hands, good effort. 20 on the shot clock. Yeah, Johnson on the bench thought that that ball hit off a of Cornwall, but it looked like he just whipped it. Perez, he's the Jamison. Good pass there from the sophomore to the senior. Jamison has been frustrated, but he keeps on playing hard. Just got a great motor. You love to watch those guys play. On both ends, he works at it. Final minute, Beatty steps into a shot. Ojiaka with another offensive rebound, draws a foul. I think that'll put him in the one and one. Well, the seventh foul on Gardner Webb sends Giacco to the line for a one and one. Look at him pursue the basketball across the lane. A lot of guys will get rebounds and just come to him. Not many guys will pursue it like that. So as he gets more minutes and starts to understand the game more, that bodes well for Virginia Tech. It would be a big addition to have some size on the floor. And if you've watched Virginia Tech basketball in the past couple of years, the thing you note is that the Hokies have lacked a true big for the last couple of seasons. Yeah, Hadim C was here for a little bit, uh, now playing at Ole Miss. Kerry Blackshear, one of the bigger players, but wasn't a true post player. Right. Now at Florida. Cornwall lost the ball. A foul booked on the Hokies. Good job attacking. A one and one coming up for the Bulldogs. Good free throw shooter. Doesn't get there that often. He's only attempted 12 all year for as much as he's played. That tells you mostly he's shooting jump shots. Done a good job of taking care of the basketball. The primary point guard this year, last year, he played off the ball more and kind of shared time with Christian Turner. Now they're playing together because of Nate Johnson being out of the lineup with the ankle injury, probably until after the first of the year. Oh, correction, that was a shooting foul, so second of two hit by Cornwall. 
Now he goes to the bench. Abidi backing up. Wilkins on a drive. Abidi pivots for Wilkins. Long two. Too short. Shot clock is off for Gardner Webb. Bulldogs holding for the final shot of the half. Alperez, Wilkins on him. Spins, misses the shot as the buzzer sounds, and the Hokies will take a 10-point lead into the locker room against Gardner-Webb. And well, that was a very quick first half against Texas Tech a few nights ago. Bounced back against Eastern Kentucky for a win the other night. And, of course, you see the double-doubles. Fernand Carey, we saw him up close at burst. What a beast he is. He was matched up with Landers Nolly at one point in that game. A couple of big ACC freshmen duking it out here at Castle Coliseum. We are underway with a second half. Virginia Tech and Gardner-Webb. It's a three from Cornwall. And the woes continue beyond the arc for Gardner-Webb. He opens the second half against Jamison again. Tyrese Radford had a little shot at him, and uh, Naheem Ali guarded him a little while, too. So uh, keeping a fresh body against Jamison was, was a big part of the defense in the first half for Virginia Tech. And we highlighted Naheem Ali to begin the game. 22 points in the last matchup against Chattanooga, zero today, as Nolly fails to bury a three. Jose Perez with just three points himself. Preseason big South player of the year. Perez, an air ball. And that won't do anything for his confidence. He's got something on his wrist right now, too. I don't know if that's some kind of preventive thing or something related to uh, an ongoing injury. It certainly doesn't assist your ability to shoot threes. Ali on a baseline drive. Trying to post up the smaller Turner. Flings it out to Aline from 15. In and out. Manford couldn't get the rebound off the glass and into the hands of Perez. Perez from the top of the arc. Again, a miscommunication on the defensive end and a, and a, a bullet dodged. Yeah, Gardner Webb has really struggled to hit these wide open shots. And Jose Perez, a guy that really stepped up last year. I mean, this guy was the runner-up Big South Freshman of the Year. And now coming into this game, 20% from three. Yeah, and it hasn't gotten better. A little frustration foul right there on the defensive end, too. Can't let that bother him. You've got to keep playing solid defense, even when that shot isn't going in. Piece of beady. Bounces over to P.J. Horn. Great inside-out basketball, Mac. Yeah, the opposite of usual. Your point guard kicking it out to the center rather than the center kicking it out to the point guard. First points of the day for P.J. Horn. Dick Perez didn't even look at the basket that time. Caught it with some space. Turner's first shot of the ball game misses the rim. And Turner 0 for 6 now from long range on the season. Radford with the Euro step and the finish to match. Timeout called by Gardner-Webb. Mike Young all fired up as the Hokies lead by 15 in the second half. Landers Nolly as the Hokies go up 39 to 24. And Virginia Tech scoring the first five points of the second half. And really, they come into this game a team that stresses to shoot a lot of the threes. But in the second half so far, they've been getting it done inside. Yeah, and I think it's a, a versatile group that can do a lot of different things, but the three is a big part of even getting the ball inside because those drives are a lot more open when you're making a three and the defense has to spread out to contest that. Yeah, we saw that just before the break when Obisa Beatty drove inside, had a bounce pass over to P.J. Horn and nailed a three right in the corner. Gardner-Webb with Christian Turner running the point. Eric Jameson back on the floor for Gardner-Webb as well. Jameson Jr., a turnaround. It's a bit of a prayer, and Radford jumping up sky high to get the rebound. Long arms. Lob into P.J. Horn, picked away. Back to Jose Perez. 
A stutter step to the glass. Boy, it's just not been his day. One for ten now. I think that might have been what Coach Young was so excited about. Landers Nolly has been guarding Perez for the most part. Defeal absolutely packing Landers Nolly. There's no doubt about that, and that'll be a foul on P.J. Horn. Perez can't catch a break either. He's wide open for a layup. Fumbles it a little bit, and it gets knocked to the ground. Watch this. Fumbles it a little bit. Here comes P.J. Horn knocking him to the ground. He's finally going to get an easy layup, and can't even get that right now. He's just <laughs> so frustrated. And you know he's really a talented guy. Yeah, absolutely. Landers Donnelly also, besides playing pretty good defense, has six rebounds, better than his average of 5.5. Turner misses again from beyond the arc. Meanwhile, for P.J. Horn, that was his third personal foul. Now goes to the bench. Ojiako back in as the five for Virginia Tech. Ojiako a little more experienced with Horn and foul trouble. At four of the 19 bench points in the first half. Hokey slowing it down. Beatty cuts in. Finds Radford. Pulls up. Just a bit too short. And meanwhile for Tyrese Radford, 0 for 4 on the year from 3. Thought he was going to pull the trigger there. And instead trying to go inside. Turner zips over to Cornwall. And that's exactly what Gardner-Webb needed to get a little bit more confidence in the second half. That's their first jumper. Really nice job by Christian Turner. He's got more than a 2 to 1 assist to turnover ratio. And that's good, but Beatty over 4 to 1 assist to turnover. 70 assists, 17 turnovers coming into tonight. Wow. Radford, could this be his first three? Just a bit off the mark. Jose Perez spins and misses. Now well, the frustration building for the sophomore from New York. And there's Nolly on Jamison. Back to the point guard and will be Sabidi. Entry lob, Ojiako. That's up on Dufiol. Shot clock down to five. Nolly pulls the trigger and scores. No space. No space. He's got a smaller guy on him, but you can be right up on him, and he can still get that shot off. Hokies have a special player, a potential star in Landers Nolly. Now to Jamison. Cornwall, who's in double figures. Missed though. Beatty with a hard bounce pass. Aline keeps it alive. Offensive rebound by the point guard and Beatty. And Nolly finishes the possession with the triple. Timeout called by Gardner Webb and Mac, they are all fired up in Blacksburg. Landers Nolly's been doing it since the very first game at Clemson, and he doesn't need any time or any space. A little crossover creates some space. Catch it and be anyone. Take a yeah. look. Landers That's why Nolly that with so popular. Right, absolutely. Cornwall leading the way for Gardner Webb with 10 points. Landers Nolly hitting a couple of threes right before the break. Now in double figures for Virginia Tech, the only Hokie in double figures with 13. I know Coach Young loves the scoring, but he loves that rebound in two, seven rebounds. If Landers Nolly can get up there where he averages seven, eight, nine rebounds a game, uh, again, that would be a big push for the Virginia Tech performance. Dancing in, there's a walk. Easy call on Eric Jamison, Jr. Jamison with eight points, but he's had to really work hard to get those eight points. Jalen Cohn. And off to Hunter Couture. This is the three. Good execution. With a wide open look. Here's Cornwall. Fouled as he went up. So another go did a nice job up, up top, but you see a little body with Hunter Couture right there. Great camera shot, guys. A second team foul called on Virginia Tech in the second half. Mm -hmm. 
the junior from Brooklyn. This is the mark in the first free throw. Yeah, they really have done a nice job of getting some kids out of New York City to Boiling Springs, North Carolina. And you were saying earlier with Gardner Webb even having a three and seven start to the season, this is a team that has a lot of talent and that record might not exactly show it. Oh, no, I, I think the schedule has had a lot to do with it. Uh, you know, they're struggling a little bit right now offensively, but uh, this is certainly a team that can contend in the Big South and can very well win it again. Carter Webb's got a great basketball history. John Drew went there, longtime NBA player. Artis Gilmore went there back when it was a junior college. Guys, coaches like Eddie Holbrook and Jim Wiles, great coaches back in the day. Okay, he's running down the shot clock inside of 10. Nolly on Jamison. Wilkins shoots and scores with a time running out. Yeah, so that's, that's an example of a not very good possession offensively that ended just fine because somebody can knock down a shot. Okie's only hit six three-pointers against Chattanooga. They have nine today against Gardner-Webb. You hear shooting makes up for a multitude of sins. That's the example right there. <laughs> Nolly on a drive. Back down to Ojiako. See, that was good ball movement from the lane to the corner, back to the top of the key, to the other side and in for a good high percentage shot. Ojiako just couldn't knock it down. Gardner-Webb trying to settle in offensively. They haven't been able to do that in the second half. Missed again. Layups not falling for the running Bulldogs. Off the screen, Nolly pulls up, swishes the long two. Yeah, you mentioned not falling. Gardner-Webb now 10 for 39, 25% from the floor. Four for 19 from long range, but they're not making any shots from any range. Turner finds Cornwall. Well, Cornwall really has been one of the lone bright spots of the offensive effort for Gardner-Webb. 13 points now. 14 points after that free throw, too. Averages 11. Hunter Couture. Well, the bench points keep adding up for Virginia Tech. Yeah, it was, it was amazing. We talked with Coach Young about the limited minutes and the limited production the other night against Chattanooga, but uh, they're, they're back on track contributing here this afternoon against Gardner-Webb. You got to feel excited for Hunter Couture getting back into the scoring effort. He was held to 0 for against Duke as Wilkins comes away with another steal. One-on-one -on -one to the basket. Misses the layup but foul. Brings us to another pack. Six different Hokies have combined for 10 threes already with 11 minutes left in this game. You see a lot of create help, kick it out, and then, of course, you have the typical inside out, and then you've got Landers Dolly who can just catch it, create space, and knock it down. Landers Dolly leading the way for Virginia Tech with 15 points. Hokies with a 53-31 lead. And how about Hunter Couture coming off the bench for Virginia Tech? And he's the only other Hokie that has double figures in scoring. Yeah, Virginia Tech has is one of only two teams, along with BYU, that has four players shooting 40% or better from three-point range. Yeah, the Hokies, that's one of their three losses this year in Maui was to BYU. Well, Mike Young certainly... A little bit more happy with Virginia Tech in the second half. Offensively, they're clicking a bit more, now shooting 47.5%. Isaiah Wilkins to the line. And hits the free throw. Well, Evan Hughes was near the sideline, and, oh, Evan, what did Mike Young have to say? Yeah, guys, watching Coach Young on the last couple of offensive possessions, he was really asking for his team to continue to move off the ball, specifically Landers Nolly, resulted in a couple of big-time threes. Guys, the Hokies starting the second half on a 17-3 run. Yeah, how about that, Mac? They were up by 10. It was 34-24. to 24. Jose Perez bullying his way to the glass and getting that layup to fall. 
and that's what you have to do. If you're missing shots, you've got to attack the rim and give the team a chance. Get, get a high percentage look or draw a foul or maybe both. I like that play. Jalen Cohn, wide open for three, but missed the shot. Christian Turner facilitates over to Jenkins. Jose Perez, found by Naheem Aline. It's interesting, really, with Naheem Aline scoring 22 against Chattanooga, zero today. It's really interesting to see the story shift for Virginia Tech offensively from game to game here at Castle in the last two games. Yeah, and they really do have a lot of different weapons. And, and of course, you love a player that's consistent, but Naheem Aline is still contributing to this team in other ways by playing defense, passing the basketball, creating. Turner fouled. The senior goes to the line. Yeah, and that's that's Turner's game right there. Not not shooting the, the long threes, attacking, drawing defense, getting the ball up on the rim or kicking it out to one of his good shooters. And missed the free throw. Came into this game just shooting 25%. Turner not necessarily the scorer for Gardner-Webb. Yeah, he had only attempted four free throws, just one for four on the year. Now one for six. Missed them both, and Aline pulls down the rebound. Jalen Cohn getting some valuable minutes as the point guard for Virginia Tech. Wilkins lets it fly. Nice job by Dufial with the block. 13 blocks. Jose Perez trying to post up on Couture. Dufi all the big man shooting for three. Yeah, he can step out. We talked about his skill level before. What a step by Reed. Just couldn't finish. He's going to be really good. Perez gets a cheap one. Now I see he's driven and got one and got a cheap one on an offensive rebound. That's how you get your confidence back. Yeah, Jose Perez now three of 13 from the field, but his last two shots for Gardner-Webb. Wilkins finds Cone. Oh, Couture and Perez go into the floor. Need to see where this foul will be called. I believe it's going to go on Gardner-Webb. It looks like Perez. It was a collision on a screen and trying to fight through a screen. Oh, break Perez. I'm going to talk this one over with Tim Kraft. It was a staggered screen. Perez was fighting through the screen. Couture was one of the screeners. And obviously there was contact and a whistle. And I guess we're going to sort this out. A couple of bodies hitting the floor. You see Couture in the right wing. Yeah, they both lower their shoulders at the same time. Kind of a simultaneous collision. Kind of a dangerous play, Mac. Yeah, it's, it's a it, it's a, football is a collision sport, but <laughs> contact uh, basketball is still a contact sport. Well, the Virginia Tech crowd voicing their opinion after the replay was shown here at Castle Coliseum. Yeah, no bias right there, right? <laughs> <laughs> Officials Jamie Lucky, Ron Groover, and Tommy Morrissey taking a while to look at this. Yeah, and again, this is this is the frustration part of, of things when things aren't going well, although Perez has started to turn it around now and got a couple baskets here on the last two trips down the floor for Gardner-Webb. Now, what are the potential outcomes here? The officials look at this replay and what fouls could they give out? Well, I'm not sure what they did, what they called initially. That so it, it makes it hard to figure out what what they would do with this. It didn't look like there was anything intentional. I do, I didn't see from that angle necessarily whether there was anything ab above the neck and shoulders. So uh, that you know that that's a great view of what happened, but it but it it doesn't give you the same level as the official who's going to call it. You see Perez raise his right arm leading into the screen. I think Coach Young is in a little impatient here. 
Yeah, well, it takes away. It obviously disrupts the rhythm of the game. Okay, just a personal foul. Oh, there would be a flagrant one. So a frag flagrant one, and apparently it's not personal between Couture and Jose Perez. Yeah, they, they didn't have a problem with it. It was a bang-bang kind of play. Couture will shoot the ball, and the ball will be put in play at the, at the point of stoppage. So Couture, the freshman from Florida. Nothing but net on the first free throw. So basically it was excessive contact when Perez raised his arm to get through the screen. It's called on Perez. Virginia Tech and the ball back after Couture hits one of the two free throws. Flagrant two rises to the level of possible ejection, but just one is just like the old intentional foul. Mm -hmm. Two shots, ball put back in play at the point that, that it was interrupted. So the Hokies maintain possession after the break. Own backs up, five of the shot clock. Wilkins has to shoot and lost the ball. Went off of the foot of Ojiako. I don't think that's what Mike Young wanted out of that long break. A uh, little deep in the shot clock, and at least it was an attacking move, but threw a lot of traffic right there. Good job by Gardner-Webb knocking the ball away. P.J. Horn back on for Virginia Tech with three fouls. Whole platoon of... Bench players in Wilkins, Ojiako, and Cone who have been productive today for the Hokies. Entry lob to Dufi all. And the ball stays with Gardner Webb. It seems like after that flagrant one foul, this has really came to a screeching halt in this game. A little, some subs, Jamison back in the game, BD on him. Nolly matched up again with Perez, although on a switch, Tyrese Radford takes him. Perez getting a bit of his offensive confidence back as Reed misses the layup. Still loose. Radford, another crucial rebound. Couture with a lob into Radford. What a possession that was. Really nice cross-court pass. Couture with the shot fake, one dribble, and then he found Radford going to the hole. What a quick possession for Virginia Tech. A foul booked on Nolly. And pushed off on Perez. 11 assists on 20 field goals for Virginia Tech. From what we've seen out of the Hokies in the earlier 10 games of the season, Virginia Tech, and we've seen them do that at times in this game, but they really milk the clock down and start the idea of shooting right under 10 seconds left to go in the shot clock. But today they've been scoring quickly. Let's see if they can do it here off of the steal. It's your... Beatty misses the layup. Here's Jamison. Senior misses the three. Right in front of the bench. Cornwall again. And the rebound for Landers Nolly racking up the boards today. Nolly for three. Jamison Jr. to Perez. Lobbing to Dufio. And the foul on P.J. Horn. That's his fourth. What lineups they need to have on the floor at certain times of the game. And the, I think they're making really good progress. Of course, they got off to such a great start, winning at Clemson, a game that nobody expected them to go down there and, and win, other than the group that's over there on that bench right now. They <laughs> did. Uh, and, of course, had the huge win against Michigan State. But, again, it's still a young team, and everybody in the league is still a work in progress. They're not going to look the same in March that they look right now the week before Christmas. No well, conference play going to resume on January 4th in Charlottesville against Virginia. Taking on the arch rivals and the defending national champions. P.J. Horn remaining on the floor even with his foul trouble. See the length of Kareem Reed right there. 
reaching around, knocking that ball away. Shot clock running down again will be Sabidi. Off a dribble, gives to Nolly. Long two. I like the energy of Gardner Webb coming out of that timeout. The shots haven't been falling. The, the lead has slipped away from them, or or the, the game has slipped away in terms of you know the, the spread of the game, but they still play with great energy on the defensive end. And that's the way that really showcases their potential when they start big South Conference play coming up in the next couple of games. I'll call it on Radford. He's racking up the fouls. That sends Gardner-Webb into the bonus, a shooting foul anyway. Now Perez has continued to attack. Even when the shots don't fall, you see him back in Radford in, back in Radford in, getting a little bit of advantage and drawing the foul. Missed the first free throw. A good free throw shooter, and he's been to the free throw line a bunch. He, uh, by far the leading free throw shooter on the team with 57 attempts and shoots 75 percent. Now, as a team in this game, Gardner Webb six of 14. Eighty on a shuffle back. Hokies have done a nice job against Jamison. Jamison too, only eight points. Really hadn't gotten a lot of great looks at it. Great ball movement for Virginia Tech. Horn off the glass. Yeah, that's not really his game right there, but he elevated and had a good look at it. Speaking of Jamison, there he is for reaching double figures now with 10. Jamison skying to the rim. 10 points, second player in double figures for Gardner-Webb. Joining Jaheim Cornwall. Carter Webb doing a lot of switching now. We're pretty much one through five. Landers Nolly, that's his fifth three of the ball game. Perez, he, you know, he wasn't that far away from him again. He had a hand up, but Nolly has such a nice quick release. And you've seen that in big games this year. Against Clemson, came onto the scene with 30 points in his first ever game. Had a couple of big threes against Michigan State. Hokies in transition. Radford wasn't the best pass from Hunter Couture, but it ends up with a layup anyway from Tyrese Radford. Yeah, if you're an athlete like Radford and can run it down, you can make that pass look just fine. Three from Reed. And another rebound for Landers Nolly. That's his ninth. Whips it over to Beattie. Offensive rebound for Radford. Well, the three party couldn't continue on that possession. Now he now five out of ten from long range. And the Hokies as a team, 11 of 28. Tie up gives the ball back to Virginia Tech. Yeah, they've missed their. Like, they've made one of their last eight. Oh. Well, Jalen Cohn running the point for Virginia Tech, and he was a big recruit that Mike Young was able to gain right after he was named the head coach, Virginia Tech. Of course, there's a lot of questions when a new coach is brought into a program, but the ability to sign Jalen Cohn really turned a lot of heads, and Virginia Tech fans were very impressed by the ability of Coach Young to sign the point guard from North Carolina. Yeah, four-star recruit from Walkertown, North Carolina, down between Winston-Salem and Greensboro, that area. Scored a lot of points in high school. Just turned 18 yesterday. You remember those days. <laughs> We're going to have the horse track. Radford, that's his first three of the season. And the bench reacts appropriately. Not only his first three of the season, his first three of his career as a Virginia Tech Hokie. Perez. That's big for Jose Perez. You see the relief on his face. <laughs> Now in double figures after really struggling for all of the first half, first moments of the second half, Perez now with 11. Tyrese Radford on a crossover. Wasn't on the same page with Isaiah Wilkins, which brings us to yet another break. Hokies lead by 24, three and a half minutes remain. His five game homestand for Virginia Tech. Getting Chattanooga in the last game, trying to make it two wins in a row. And sent Gardner Webb home to Boiling Springs, North Carolina with their eighth loss of the season. 
Mike Young, the first year head coach. Liking what he's seen out of his bench today. Virginia Tech with 28 points off of the bench. And for Gardner-Webb, only four players have scored in this ballgame. Yeah, Virginia Tech's had eight different players contribute in the scoring area. And Gardner-Webb only with Dufial, Cornwall, Jamison, and Perez. No one else has scored a point for the Bulldogs. Turner running the point for Gardner-Webb. And it should be said that Gardner-Webb without their guard, Nate Johnson. So that certainly is a pretty big injury. One of their more talented players that is out. While a foul called. Perez going with that left hand. Ochiaco says, I got all ball. <laughs> Perez already with 11 points. Now two of three on the free throw strike today. A couple of new faces in for both teams. Brandon Johnson getting some playing time for Virginia Tech and seeing the first looks of Gabe Bryant. Can't get the rebound there. The sophomore Isaiah Wilkins pulls it down for the Hokies. Gabe Bryant, a local product, Spartanburg, Dorman High School, redshirted last year. Big strong guy. Round to Jalen Cohn, matched up with Terry. Cohn. Too hard on the three. Brandon Johnson wrestles in, forces a tie up. The ball goes back to Gardner Webb anyway, but good effort there for the grad transfer from Alabama State. Yep, out of Ohio originally. It would have been good to have another. Sometimes you just need bodies for practice for one thing. Brandon Johnson plays hard. And he's experienced. Terry for three. Battles in and out. Good looking stroke out of the freshman from Georgia. You better believe for Gardner Webb that one of these games, the threes are going to start falling. I know Tim Kraft hopes that sooner than later. <laughs> Cohn lost the dribble, back with it now. It's a screen. Wilkins launches a three, nothing but net. Winston-Salem, Mount Tabor. Like you said, leading returning scorer from last year. Off of the bench and in double figures with 13. That's his second three of the ball game. Meanwhile, Dufial, sophomore from Martinique. Gardner Webb with four guys that have scored, but four in double figures. And Dufial now with 10. Hokie slowing it down in the final minutes. You want to work that clock, but you want to keep attacking. Cone attacks and one. The freshman will take a trip to the line after the floater goes through the net. Freshman against a freshman right there. It's Terry with the foul. Good quick move, good first step. Eyes on the rim the whole way. Good job by Jalen Cohn. Cohn's first trip to the free throw stripe in this game. Hope he's back closer to their scoring average of 73, 74 a game. Versus the 53 they had the or 63 they had the other night against Chattanooga. How about this defense for Virginia Tech? Now Gardner Webb, some of the open looks haven't gone in, but they have held Gardner Webb to 30% from the field. They've done a particularly good job against Jamison and, and, and Perez. One minute to play. Wilkins didn't like the look, finds Cohn. Three with contact, no good. Cohn likes all the looks. Brandon Johnson blocked. Radford tried to clean it up. Well, there was nothing clean about that play, but Tyrese Radford, the freshman, to the line for two. Johnson trying to get that basket, trying to get that first point of the year. Tipped it again. Meanwhile, Radford's laying on the floor over here. <laughs> the redshirt freshman recruited by Buzz Williams missed that 
first free throw. Did not play last year. As Gardner-Webb brings in a few new faces in the Hokies Sweet 16 campaign. Bradford, we talked about how he competes, and he's not really tall, just barely 6'2", but he's got those long arms, very athletic, and just plays hard. And that solidifies a double-double. Ten points for Radford, ten rebounds. All kinds of new players out for Gardner-Webb. Turner drives in, looking for help from Bryant. Terry on a pump fake. This is the three. Ojiaku comes down with a rebound, and the Hokies couldn't dribble it out with 20 seconds remaining in this game. What a performance by the bench for Virginia Tech coming up big with 34 points from non-starters in this ball game. Gardner-Webb with only four players scoring against Virginia Tech, and the Hokies improved to 8-3 and three on the season. Good performance for Virginia Tech, Mac. Yeah, much more solid offensive performance, uh, good scouting report defensive performance where they really tried to take Jamison and Perez out of the offense. And just, uh, again, solid is probably the word that comes to mind. Took care of the ball, shot the ball a little bit better, and uh, you got Tyrese Radford with a double-double and Landers Nolly a rebound away from one with 17 points and nine rebounds. Yeah, Landers Nolly. Racking up the points for Virginia Tech. Hokies improving from beyond the arc with 13 threes 